Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about something that is a little bit uncomfortable but still very important because making the right purchases is absolutely key to having good style and actually enjoying putting together outfits in the morning and avoiding all that sort of frustration and feeling like you don't have anything to wear. So by making the right purchases we can save our money and put it all into items we will actually wear. I want to go over five different shopping mistakes that you are making. Don't worry, I'm not judging. I've done all of these myself, so you are in good company. If you consider me good company, I guess that depends. All right, the first thing I want to talk about is emotional shopping. And this one I think is definitely one of the harder ones because it can be really, really, really difficult to control. And I definitely see it as sort of a sliding scale. Maybe it's something you do every now and again and you don't really consider it a problem at all. And maybe you feel like unable to control it and it's taking over your finances and if that is the case I would definitely suggest therapy and just getting help from someone else to control it just be really honest for me it's never been that big of a problem thankfully but it has still created a lot of clutter and a lot of unnecessary purchases but for me it was really helpful to have emotional shopping kind of compared to other quite destructive behaviors we do when we can't deal with what is on the inside. Maybe you have limitless money in which I am very jealous, but even if you don't consider it a big problem, it is still something that creates clutter when we're buying something just because we have an itch to buy something to distract ourselves. We don't necessarily consider is this item going to be something I want to wear for a long time? Is it high quality? Do I love it? The purpose is kind of served once we have bought it. You know this is true, you keep buying so many things and you think they're not expensive, I'm just gonna buy them. A really good exercise is to add all of these things up and kind of see the number and be wow what else could I have bought with that money and instead I bought a bunch of useless things it just gets quite expensive and for what? For actually no good reason whatsoever. So trying to find things to distract yourself with that are not money based and buying based can be a really really good thing if you can do that. And if I can't help myself, if I have a very very strong urge to shop something, I kind of prepare in advance for those emotions. I have kind of set a rule for myself that if I'm going to buy something, I'm not going to just go online and search for something to buy or go into a store and just buy whatever I liked in that moment. Instead, I am going to buy something off of a wish list, which I have pre-planned and kind of well considered all the items on it. So I know that even if I end up buying something, it's not going to be something I consider a mistake purchase. It might not be within the budget of that month and that is a whole separate issue. But if I do spend the money, at least it's going to be on something I have already kind of considered. Helping yourself along the way to not make bad purchases, at least, if you're going to do some emotional shopping. But obviously the best thing is to avoid it. I'm just trying to be realistic here. And the next mistake I want to talk about is impulse shopping. It definitely goes hand in hand with the previous. In both instances you tend to end up with a lot of items that just have nothing to do in your wardrobe whatsoever. Some of my favorite pieces ever were bought on what I consider impulse shopping but some of my worst purchases were also very impulsive. I don't tend to have a lot of pieces that I spent a lot of time thinking through that I actually regret. If you feel like you have a lot of items which you don't really understand why you even bought, I think it could be a great idea to set some sort of amount of time where you will think about an item before you actually add it to your wardrobe. We can just get so incredibly caught up in a moment or the marketing of an item that we just immediately purchase it and kind of teaching yourself to sit back, consider it, and ask yourself all the right questions before you buy something is incredibly helpful. If you can even just wait until the next day, I find that often you have forgotten about the item, and if you have, you're not really gonna miss it. We're gonna move on to mistake number three, and that is to kind of think that I'm just gonna get it tailored to fit me. And as you will probably pick up on as we go through the rest of this list, a lot of these mistakes are made because our brain kind of wants to tell us that 
it's fine. You have so many reasons to buy this. Don't even think about whether you have a reason not to buy it. But the whole, I'm just gonna get it tailored. I've done this so many times, uh, especially because I do have a sewing machine, but it's making it very easy to kind of think it's fine. I'll just fix that. I'll take it in a little bit there. We'll lift that. And then suddenly you're ending up with a really big project for something that doesn't really fit you. And typically the more alterations you have to do to a garment, the more difficult it is, the more expensive it is. So this is something I have become a lot more critical of. Obviously it is very difficult to find something in the store that just fits you perfectly. So I will allow like a few <laughs> tucks here and there, but just let's not delude ourselves. Let's have like a one foot in reality still. What is going to be possible? What's going to be realistic that I actually do? And talking about having at least one foot kind of down planted in reality, the next issue, the next mistake. I've heard this be called kind of the magpie effect, whatever it is, being attracted to all the shiny things. Where am I gonna wear this? You don't even care because all you see is sparkly and you just buy it and then maybe down the line you will sell it still with the tags on, you will get way less than you paid for it and you'll be a little bit sad because you don't want to sell it because you actually still want to wear it but where are you gonna wear it and you haven't worn it for years so I mean you should probably just sell it so you can get some of the money back. Okay you can see I can go on with this for a while. I feel like this is also something that is getting so much worse with Instagram and TikTok where we see people buying and kind of putting on outfits that look so good because in pictures when a skirt is really short it just looks amazing but when you're walking around in reality with a very short skirt you feel like I can't wear this to work I can't really sit down in this skirt it's really tight it's really uncomfortable I'm not gonna wear it at home to lounge in I feel like there are just so many influences to make us buy things that are not maybe the most realistic to combat this shopping mistake you're supposed to be really realistic with what lifestyle you actually do have and not the lifestyle you wish you had make sure that you plan for your day and not some sort of fantasy day and the first thing i have done is to kind of inspect these items a little bit what is it i love about it is it the exaggerated shape of it is it the sparkles whatever it is and then maybe i try to pick out one or two things one like a couple of aspects of these pieces i try to incorporate it into my style in other ways that are much more wearable so i end up still having like that extra-ness to my outfit that I really crave so I don't feel like I have to set up for walking around and wearing really boring clothes but then I also don't end up with things that are just way over the top and it can be very very small details as well so it might not always be that difficult to achieve so this is really about going back and analyzing your own personal style a little bit and the final shopping mistake that I have made that you are making probably a lot of people are making is to value quantity over quality instead of thinking about is this, is this garment quality am I going to wear it for a long time is this in line with my style where I think I'm still going to enjoy this in two years time these are the kind of questions you want to ask yourself I would personally wear a top that I really really love every day for a month I mean it would be difficult with washing but like let's just I'm trying to make a point here like a top I really, really loved every day for a month, then a new top every day for a month. A few years ago, I actually started looking into how much money I spent on clothes that I didn't really look at as valuable. I did not look at it and think, oh my gosh, I love it. I can't believe I own that. I can't wait to wear it. Just clothing that I thought, it's fine, it's cheap, I'm gonna get it. I collected it in a pile and when I did a declutter. Math is not my strong suit, but it was strong enough to make me realize that I could have bought several designer pieces that would have stayed and been so loved in my wardrobe for years and years. And I'm not saying that you should start buying designer clothing. Think of something that has value to you instead. But for me, because I love clothes, I chose to look at, oh my goodness, I could have had this and this and this. And instead I have this pile of trash on the floor. And I really do get it. It can be quite difficult when you don't know if it's actually something that is worth paying for and you want to make sure it's still quality so it's going to last and you want to make sure it's still in your style. But starting this journey, it has been the biggest change for me in uh, getting better style, enjoying fashion more and feeling like I actually put clothes on that I really love. And just as an example of this, I have designer belts 
which have a much lower cost per wear than some of my fast fashion tops. I mean, I know what I would pick. Buy fewer things and buy better. I am planning on making more videos around how you can actually find quality clothing and how you can see whether something is worth purchasing. It's difficult to know what to look for so let me know if that would be helpful and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell notification so you will be notified every time I post. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye!